Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Crash Bandicoot and watch me honestly forgetting what I was doing when I started the recording. So we have 25 relics, which means all the levels in the Secret Warp Room are unlocked. <coughs> and we're going to start with this one. So anyone who played Crash 3 will remember the dark the dark level with the Firefly, who was the last level of that particular game. Also remember it was a horrible level because putting putting platforms in darkness is never a good idea. And it continues to be such here. And this this is I think the first time we've seen one character appearing in another character's and one of another character's environments, like Coco hasn't been in this um, castle, medieval environment before. And it's not really one which he's well suited to. Because a lot of it is a lot of it is careful jumps. Which Coco Again, there's not much there's not much insurance behind Coco's jumps because, as we covered before, she doesn't have a double jump. And you may have noticed up there the gem. Gems are a little. These the secret warp room levels have two gems and a relic each. The gems appear like crystals, but they're often a little a little hidden. And that one was an absolute bastard because I went all the way through the level only just noticing it was there before I hit the checkpoint. And there's some splash damage from the nitros. For the for the person who told me that splash damage was not something to be worried about. Also a nice interesting example of um, of the game punishing me doing something that's fun. Oh you wanna I'm gonna double stop these boxes? Well tough. There's nothing special to say about the box gem. It's a standard level. So provided you're provided you're being careful about getting all these boxes, you should be able to There's nothing stopping you from getting the box gem first time through since by the time you get to these levels, by the time you come to do these levels if you're doing things methodically like pretty much all spurgy gamers do now. You're gonna have you're gonna have all the powers, and with Coco that's kind of a moot point anyway. But we have ourselves some invincibility, there's some nitros behind those spinning blades. And we wait for it to wear off so we can bounce up here. go that way only to find a bunch of nitros and you see the firefly just not letting us see anything which means he won't let us see until we walk into the unknown these four boxes here it's been three of them that drops the TNT that starts the countdown and that blows it up so two gems not a huge fan of that level it's it's dark. It's darkness. Darkness is not good in a platformer. This, however, is a very interesting level, just because it's the sort of thing that never really gets done anywhere else in the game. You might remember the minecart mechanics from Compactor Reactor. Basically, the idea here is we're in a race with Crunch. There's not, there's not much to the actual race part of this. Basically, your first lap, your first lap, you need to just take the main route. That will put you far enough ahead of him. And then the second lap, it's just a case of taking all the alternate routes to start cleaning up, cleaning up the boxes. The whole thing I think is those three exclamation mark boxes there. You need to hit one of those every single lap. 
And the reason for that will become... Chances are, you've seen the amount of nitros around. You've probably already figured out why we need to hit one of those every lap. Do a quick shake in there. You've probably figured out why we need to hit one of those every lap. You've probably already figured out what it actually brings into being, since we haven't seen it yet. And indeed, there it is. That's all of those. 65 boxes. Easy gem. And the race isn't much trouble as well. After our first lap, we didn't see Crunch at all. If you do end up stuck behind Crunch though, it's damn near impossible to get past it. Speaking of things that are damn near impossible, give a huge hand for the return of the helipack. Except now, in a race. I'm being a little unfair on this level. This level is actually... It's more fun than you would expect for being a helipack level. The biggest challenge is going to be getting past... The biggest challenge is not getting past the polar bear, because... That's a fa fairly easy thing to do <coughs> early in the race. If you've got a good handle on the helipack controls, the race isn't going to be much of an issue. What is going to be an issue is not instinctively spinning every box you see, because you see, you should have seen by now, there are those nitro boxes scattered throughout the level. So you need to, you need to have a good quick eye for what's a regular box that needs to be spun and what's a nitro box. Of course, you don't have to spin the box. You can just fly into the. You can just fly into the like that and drop the box. And that effect has the same effect. But it's another easy race. It's an easy course. And when we come back to grab them, it'll probably be an easy relic as well. So, on to what is definitely not going to be an easy relic. This is the final atmosphere stage. Thought we were done with these. We're not. This is Solar Bowler, and its difficulty, at least in this stage of the Secret Warp Room, comes from the fact that there are boxes everywhere on this level. There's all kinds of there's all kinds of split paths. There's all kinds of little little hidden things dotted around the level. This is actually a lot different, a, a much different kind of feel from a regular atmosphere level. As usual, the apples lead the way. It's more focused on. This level's more focused on exploration than. It's more focused on exploration than providing a an actual challenge in terms of your handling of the atmosphere. There are those oscillating platforms. I, I like them as a hazard. I do. I like myself some moving platforms. Yeah, your first run through the level is kind of going to be pretty dull because you've got you're having to go slow, which is, as we've demonstrated before, not the main not the main fun of the atmosphere. Instead, the fun of the atmosphere comes from just blasting around, blasting around narrow narrow passageways like that. It comes from moving fast. It is from making making corners that you really shouldn't be able to do. But in your first run through this level, you're kind of you're hampered by the fact that you've got to be you've got to be methodical. You've got to keep you've got to be moving around to to find all the boxes that are hidden away. 
these little sections I like. I like them a lot. Anyone who's played, um, anyone who's played the, the game Scrooble Scramble, and there's a reference for the ages. It's one of those things that will probably be. It's one of those things that probably gives those people nightmares. Difficult obstacle, obstacle in that game. I played that game a lot when I was a kid. Yeah, check on the check on the boxes to see how far we're going. We're not even halfway. And this is one of the reasons I'm kind of dreading the eventual relic run. Because not because you have to be like, anywhere near as methodical in the relics, but just because it is a long level, especially for an atmosphere level. There's a nice interesting trap back there, like if you bomb too fast out of that tube, which is, as I've already said, the big fun of atmosphere levels. If you bomb out of that tube, you're going to run straight into those nitros. So you can hear in the background there, the telltale hum of the, telltale hum of the level exit. But we have lots of boxes still to find. That takes care of the nitros at least. So we've got nine, seven, five. Very slow rolling. There's the exit. Still five boxes. I figure, yeah, they're gonna be on this little detour over here, and there's four of them. There's box number 86. So I can actually do some of that fun speed moving around tight sections to finish off. Grab the second gem, and we're away. So finally. This level, naturally, this is technically level 30, so it's it's only fitting that it should be the hardest regular level in the game. But it's also one hell of a fun level. Obviously, we're on the snowboard, which I said, I've spoken every time we've seen Avalanche, that I love, I love the snowboard, I think it's a great gimmick. I love pretty much anything in games that's related to snowboards. So we're not really seeing the full force of this level on this run, because obviously this run is our first time through, I've got to take it a bit more slowly. There's nothing chasing us, there's nothing just stopping me from coolly meandering through the level. Except that, when you're building up to a big jump, you've got to get some speed up. That's just the law. I like that little section because it's kind of the game playing with your expectations. Because you've, you've, you've grown accustomed to the idea that the apples tell you where you need to be going and there the apples are all over the town place. And eventually they do tell you where you're going, but they put you on the complete opposite end, opposite side of the course, first. I like the perspective of this level as well. It may look a little confusing, but it's it never shows to be an issue. And the gem up there above those nitros, I didn't see. This is actually my... This is, this is my second completed run through the level. I straight up didn't see that gem my first time through. That box there, it's one of those things where I'm going to hit it or not. But it's above a nitro, so in the end, who really cares? 111 boxes on the level, and we are done with that. So 
So that's all 10 gems from the Secret Warp Room. Gonna be doing a few things before we get the relics. So I'll see you next time for that. Bye bye.